Samurai Pizza Cats, or Kato Ninden Tayande, for the Famicom by Tecmo, released in 1991. Based on a short-lived animated series created by the combined efforts of Soto Agency and Tatsunoko Productions, and was later aired in the States under the former mentioned title. Unfortunately, Saban's license expired over a decade ago, and is now under recent ownership of Discotech Media. Anyways, let's just dive right the fuck in. Much like the show on which it's based, why this game never saw the light of day here in the US is a mystery unto itself. Okay, onto the basic plotline and concept. If you've seen much of the TV show as possible back when it was first aired, or at the very least re-ran, by now you should already be familiar. It's set in Little Tokyo, or Edoropolis, as it was originally called in the original Japanese edition, within which countless nomadic races of feudal-style cyborg animal beings are populated, or animaroids, and all sorts of crazy shit is going down, depending on a certain chapter in the game. Whether it's derived from the actual TV series, or made up especially for this game adaptation alone, thanks to the combined efforts of Seymour the Big Cheese, or Kitsune Zuka Kono no Kami, Bad Bird, or Karamaru, and his ruthless as fuck Ninja Crow Clan. And who's out to stop him? None other than our titular feline trio, of course, Speedy Serviche, aka Yataro, Polyester, aka Pudurun, and Guido Anchelvi, aka Tsukashi, with the rescue team alongside them, which I'll get to momentarily. As informed by Francine from the show, voiced by Polly Little and Satomi Korogi, in English and Japanese respectively. Basically, in terms of gameplay, it's what I like to call the junior edition of Ninja Gaiden meets Mega Man, but although it tends to be easy at first, well, mostly throughout the course of it, I wouldn't even go so far as to expect mercy from this game. Upon starting, you're treated to picking either one of the three main pizza cats, who will stick with you for that given stage, and in between them, you're allowed to switch them out. There doesn't happen to be any variation whatsoever aside from their obvious appearance, basic abilities, and or their special ninja magic sorcery, which, a la Ninja Gaiden, every time you use it, up in B, a portion of your Nimpo bar depletes. You can even swap between your currently selected pizza cat and his or her fellow rescue team members, who sport their own sets of abilities. For example, General Catton, or Rikino Shin, who can take out boulders with a single punch. Bad Cat, aka Miyatoru, who can fly to great heights via his trusty wing propeller device. Miyazma O'Toole, aka Goton, who can drill underground via his limbs, including his goddamn tail no less. And finally, Spritz T Cat, aka Neki, who sports better underwater swimming capabilities than everyone else. Take note, every time you use a certain rescue team helper, the help meter depletes throughout, in which case I suggest applying your strategies accordingly, depending on who you're playing in order to make it automatically and gradually replenish, or obtain a special power-up, which will be mentioned later. In terms of the overall game length, there's 11 stages to fight and traverse your way through, jam packs with limits with all sorts of random bizarre enemies, multiple secret passages, unique and formidable end bosses, and how can we forget those plot-aiding cutscenes? Also, in true Mega Man and Shatterhand fashion, you can actually pick whatever order you desire to proceed in concerning a later chain of stages. Getting back to the power-ups, a heart refills a portion of your life, an end bottle refills a portion of your Ninpo meter, and as mentioned before, there's that special power-up, a bell surprisingly, to refill the help meter of your rescue team members. Onto the magic abilities, Speedy Polly and Guido each have their own respective incantations that they perform, and can be upgraded twice throughout the course of the game, and if I were you, I strongly suggest saving them for the boss battles. And speaking of boss battles, they can be obliterated easily with little to no sweat whatsoever, as long as said stipulation is kept and preserved throughout the course of each stage. Control-wise, though they tend to get jarring and out of proportion at first, if not so much. They're even not so much of a pain in the testicles to adjust to, especially with the evasion timing, conserving your ninfo power and such. And at least the gameplay routine isn't too humdrum or underwhelming, unlike, say, the notorious Super Pitfall, or God forbid, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Seriously, let's not get ourselves started with those festering fuck piles of feces! As far as Samurai Pizza Cat's challenge, as fair and tolerable as it appears to be, it kind of suffers a smidgen in this department, unlike maybe the Ninja Gaiden trilogy, the third of which was out the same damn year as this shit, surprisingly. And let's not get ourselves started with the differentiating stage layouts, even as you get dangerously close to the end snuffing the hell out of Seymour and the Big Cheese, and even Bad Bird and his Ninja Crow clan and others. In true YY World 2 fashion, the difficulty here just about falls flat on its goddamn ass! Though, if you're not familiar enough with the later layout, Gott im Himmel, Wern sie zu vergewaltigen ihren Intellekt wie eine Gottverdammte Prostituerte! Oh, and there's a password system as well. As always, be sure to look them up on your favorite sites, or should you get a game over, write them down carefully, because they're actually indicated within. For a 91 Famicom game graphically, the visuals are, within every true sense of the word, phenomenal beyond imagination, 
though certain elements do suffer at times. The stage background, enemy respawns and repetitions, or the little-to-no movement and imagination of bosses, for instance. Most of the stages and backgrounds are very faithful to the TV series, and so are the characters, whether they appear in certain cutscenes, in-game, what have us. Complete with a decent amount of unforgettable yet awkward gags, especially with Big Chief Seymour, Geriatric, Big Al Dente, Lucille, Princess Vi, the Mutt Family, hell, they're all there. Tecmo really did this show way more justice than one could possibly expect out of a true Samurai Pizza Cats fan, yours truly included. In terms of music and sound, composed by the combined efforts of Shitamachi Kajiya and Ryuichi Nita of Ninja Gaiden 2 and 1 fame, respectively, aside from the rendition of the original Japanese anime opening theme, as well as some of its supporting anthems, several original tracks are meshed in, as ever, to correlate with the game's current theme. The sound effects range from mediocre yet zany to unnerving yet intense, to say the absolute least. If I had to pick my personal faves, considering that some tracks are reused later, they definitely have to be all boss themes, except for the Bad Bird fight at the end. Stage 1, various cutscene jingles, including the one before the Stage 2 boss, and even Dr. Purple's theme before the Stage 7 boss, amongst others. And finally, for Samurai Pizza Cat's replayability, due in part to the earlier stated alternate secret passages, and even the straightforward long stages, and the I'm not even trying any more cakewalkish bosses, to say the absolute least, it definitely ranges from zilch to slightly moderate in this department. Therefore, all in all, what's my final verdict on Samurai Pizza Cats? Thanks in part to the semi-typical Mega Man and Ninja Gaiden hybrid gameplay twist to prevent the experience from getting too stale, and notwithstanding whatever flaws I might have addressed, it's still a solid Japan-only Famicom game, which, with the exception of maybe some clone consoles, if you're gonna play it on your NES, you definitely need a goddamn converter for it. Yet again, it's easy to see why this game never saw the light of day here in the US, much unlike the source material on which it was based. By all means, if you're a fan of either of the two comparable game franchises, or hell, the short-lived obscure anime series in and of itself, track this shit down like an enemy base camp. And for those that are into online shopping, at certain online auctions, it should run you approximately 25 to 45 bucks loose, or a mind-blowing 170 to 255 bucks complete and boxed. As ever, you won't regret it, I assure you. And until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God signing off.